to you about the space that we're sitting in. And I want to ask of you, where is that space you want to go when you wish to create? When you need to create, what do you turn to? Have you ever noticed that some of us look up? And I'm sure many in the room could probably describe exactly why that happens neurologically a lot better than I could. But I think it has something to do with finding space, finding that space to think. Finding the space to make something profound, I think, is why we're all here. And when I go searching for what to say to try to be profound and try to gather your thoughts, I often go out there to the high places, to the wide places, the solo spaces. And sometimes those spaces that we share with others, many others, but we have our own window seat view of the wide expanses. I feel like those are the spaces where I really put my thoughts together. And for some, it's the white spaces, it's the bright spaces, and some, the messy spaces. And how many of you have some of your best and most creative thoughts in the shower spaces? I know that's, that's where I find so much of my work. So to be given the space, I think, is really the starting point for great things. And I feel like we've been given that here, and quite literally here, to be able to give, be given this space on the stage. So presenters sometimes stand up here, and the first thing they say is how excited they are. And they kind of feel like they may be stretching the truth a little bit, at least in the beginning of their presentation. But the reality is, it's not about me facing all of you, being nervous about that. It's holding that weight of feeling that there are so many people out there with incredible stories that deserve to be standing here. And I get to stand here. So how do I make sure it's something worthy of this stage? But the great part about this opportunity is that for me, it's a second chance. It's another iteration from a year past. And I think with each iteration, we find a little bit more of ourselves. We're able to develop further and just be, put our thoughts as they are. And what I start to realize about this conference and this space that has been provided by this team is that it doesn't take the stage necessarily. It's all the spaces here that allow each of us to come every year and iterate and find a little bit more of what we wish to work on, of who we wish to work with. And what we wish to take back to our colleagues. So when I think about this space, how has it done that? How has it created that dynamic? I start to realize what's drawn me in. And it was the fact that it's not by coincidence. It's by intentionality. This was designed by this team. And that's what I first noticed. To create this human dynamic, I feel like it's been studied of how we work together. And where this talk is going, sure enough, I think the news I have to share with you is also inspired by physical space. How many of you know that the MedEx team works in, at maximum, something that's not much bigger than a 20 by 20 tent? So all of this community building has come from something that's less than 400 square feet. And as they move forward and move into a new and greater space, it's also brought to the idea of what can that space now be? And of course, greater and greater ambitions arise. So how do you create, but now how do you co-create? And of course, that's a lot about 
what we're doing here is trying to figure out how best. So Dr. Chu and I, over the past year, have co-led MedEx Makers. And there are a lot of things we could tell you, and I'm sure if you know anything about me, you're expecting me to start talking about 3D printers and technology and show you all the cool things. But this year's a little bit different because we really want to share with you what we feel like is the most profound discovery that we're on and what is our next iteration. So what we've started to notice between my work here and also my work at the University of Colorado in an innovation lab is this idea of how words get construed and how we think of makers and designers and how sometimes people start to create a divide between them. But the reality is that makers design, designs make, designers make. It's all interwoven. And what we want to create is that atmosphere where people don't see that division. And not only with makers and designers, but of course with everyone. So how do we get everyone included in that process? So it's not a grand slide. It's not a, a formal announcement. It's simply a slide that's opening the start of a conversation. So as recent as these developments are, we're inviting you to come and create what MedEx Studio can be with us. Because if we're going to roll out a model of co-creating with all, we should surely devise what this studio can be with all. So some of you have seen us in the tent. And I cautioned anyone that stopped by yesterday, your ideas will surely be borrowed. I actually, these aren't notes. They're just blank cards. But I wanted people to feel like the things that they were saying yesterday are being heard and that we're referencing them already, because you're part of this co-creation process. So for all of you that stopped by yesterday and here forward, thank you. You're part of this with me. And if you stop by that tent, what you'll actually see or hear are more questions than anything. We want you to write questions, and we want you to answer questions. We want to work on this together. Although we tried to lay out a few basic tenets of what this is about, and I think at this point your advantage is better than mine to start to understand what we're talking about. But we believe that there's really untapped potential here for healthcare designers that happens when the core ideas of everyone included are not just agreed to, but actively put into practice. There does not yet exist this kind of healthcare design studios that I know of, potentially, that embrace and embody the ideals of everyone included. There is an art form to creating this. And we are here now, where this book hasn't been written, but we have the pages and we have the pens, and we want you to help us fill it in. So please stop by the tent, and please engage with us. You don't even have to be here physically. But having a physical space allows us to even connect better with those that are virtual. So as you see, the pages are starting, starting to be written. And it's not my handwriting, and it's not the handwriting of one, but several that are answering questions. My background is architecture, so I've already been asking people, we need the systems. We need to start building the foundation. What does it actually look like? And so people have already started. I was, I was sent a slide yesterday from a doctor here that said maybe the structure should be something like this, where it's connected and it all feeds to the same place, but they're not attached. How it actually looks. Like how are the divisions of space? And again, is it one space? Is it many? Are they distributed? Are you each creating one in your locale? I hope so. We don't know yet. And if you stop by, you can play with this kind of fancy hot glue gun of a 3D printer pen. But the idea is, how do we create, give those tools to everyone to be able to think in 3D and think through making? Because I'm someone who believes that the more that we do things hands-on, it actually changes how we collaborate. So to not have brainstorming and ideation and so much reliance on, on verbal communication, 
but what happens when you put things in people's hands and they actually respond to it? We already have a new 3D printed, human printed X. It's a lot of where my research is going is how do we use materials and surfaces to be actually communicate and develop with, again, instead of thinking. How do we get that feedback, whether it's from people interacting or material feedback? This is a student that was actually in one of my courses in Denver. He was a high school student that was currently enrolled and turned out to be one of the sharpest prototypers, fastest that we had. But there was a moment in time where what he was modeling, this one simple module, I asked him to attach and make a two-module system, and he couldn't do it. And so I got the cardboard out, and I said, a piece of tape, figure out how it goes together in the physical space, and then go back to the modeling space. So in this case, it's this unit. It's simple. It pops. It's made out of cardboard and a rubber band. And you can't imagine how many people took hold of this and wanted to describe all the things that they had envisioned for it. People in healthcare, people in all kinds of industries, whether it's a safety for pills, whether it's a fidget space, dexterity, and so forth. So what happens when you give the physical instead of just the verbal idea? We looked at origami and folding as a means to learning laser cutting. And before we knew it, there were origami patterns that were being used in stents. There was a female in the class that worked on how could we come up with an origami folding pattern that could be the reverse engineering warm-up exercise for a surgeon that's working on a da Vinci robot. So if we could study the muscles that are being used in particular surgeries, could we reverse design a warm-up pattern? And so all these things that we classify as different disciplines, how they are interconnected, and how we can think of mechanisms and be able to kind of linearly, laterally jump. So this division between disciplines is one we are creating. So if we stop perceiving it, it may stop to exist. I'm recently working with a psychiatrist, and what's absolutely fascinating to me is that I feel like he understands more of my architectural world than some of my architectural colleagues. He thinks his future in mental health will also come to the built environment. He thinks that healthy communities will be the start of healthy people. And he thinks that how can we start to engage on a civic level on topics of mental health. So to hear people grouping together mental health and architects and urban planners, it gets me excited. The idea of authorship, and people think when it comes to coding and scripting, who's going to take authorship? And I look at it the other way around, and I say, oh my goodness, can you imagine we're at the point now where doctors and patients and everyone can co-author a building with architects? So not always staring at the problem, but sometimes also staring at the possibilities. We've had some great examples this week. So for those that have made it to the design event night, we had the director of the Eames office uh, foundation that's sharing the work of his grandparents. And there are lateral shifts there that were incredibly important to their success as we know it today. So from trying to understand the double curvature of the chair to the splint, the chair happened because the lateral shift to the splint happened first. So this idea of rigorous play, and how, again, do we play with the physical to understand better what we're after. What if we made a space where we could rigorously play? What would it look like? When would it be open? How would you access it? I have many more questions that I want to ask you if you join me in the tent. I hope you will. Thank you. Thank <music> you.